Hello all, welcome to Damsels and Dishes, the return of our Dungeons and Dragons series, and today we are Paladins. Mm. Um, I am going for more of a, um, a Heath Ledger kind of paladin look today, with uh, just a bare tunic and a dirty face, and Lexi's sword. Yeah. <laughs> um, sword. There got, it is. I got all the weapons. Um, and we will introduce our characters as well. You have a character, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I do too. A queen one. <laughs> uh, let's say hello to everybody. Hi, Half Donut. Good to see you too. It's called Logs. Hello. Thank awesome. you for that reference. I will never get sick of that reference. Hello, <laughs> Medius. Hey, J. Par Scoopa fan. What's up, Joe? Um, what Tina. Up, what up? Ooh, is that a new person? D Class Air? No, uh, D Class Air has been on here before. Um,. And I think that's all. Oh, and Blind Seer. Hey, Blind Seer. Hi, Al. Long time no talk. All right, sweet. So, uh, Lexi, what are we cooking today? We are making oath bars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some chili because paladins are the mom of the group and also the soldiers. And uh, so it's soldier food. Soldier food, yeah. Great. But also nutritional and easy to, on the go. Because that was my take on paladins. <laughs> I'm down for that. I'm down for it. So we're gonna do the oath bars first and real quick while we're talking before we introduce characters because we're gonna pop those into the freezer oh. so that we can eat them cool. as our actual dessert. So oh, healthy dessert, right on. It's not okay, healthy. not healthy. Are lawful goods lawful good characters allowed to swear? Listen, paladins are not always lawful good. This is gonna be a whole conversation. All right, come All right. in hot. Come in hot. So I have two tablespoons of butter going into our nice little Trader Joe's multi-grain hot cereal mix. The reason I'm choosing this is because you can normally use like rolled oats or um, old-fashioned oats, but this has rye, barley, oats, and wheat. Ooh! Oh hey! Thanks, Blind Seer. Thank you for the cheer, Blind Seer. Awesome. And that uh, that felt more D and D. Like it, I don't know, barley was like yeah, 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 definitely. Also, I'm curious. I don't think I've ever had barley. Alright, so that's in there. We got a half cup of brown sugar. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's like fully prepared. I didn't even know when she did this. This is wizardry. This isn't the wizard episode, Lexi. Half casting. <laughs> okay, and then you need about a half a cup of peanut butter. I'm going to be super generous. Whoa, that is a... <laughs> okay, and it looks like a lot. That's a very generous half cup. Uh, it's probably like three-fourths of a cup. I'm a peanut butter fiend. I really like it. It'll hold it together better. Um, also, we got a food cam I got well. kind of hungry at work today and might have eaten some of our peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I didn't put that much in there. I probably put three-fourths of a cup. But you mix it all up. Oh, yeah. And the cinnamon. I hated cinnamon before we started this show, and now I put it on everything. Really? You hated it? Yeah, I just It was that Pooja Deuce that got you turned really on to it. It was. Episode one. That's a throwback, y'all. Yeah. Uh, J. Par super fan. That is so true. That is a callback. Yay! We have. How long do we have it? Just makes it back to us alive. Yes, I am back alive, not kidnapped uh, or worse. And I didn't burn down the stream. <laughs> um, but I was saying, J. Par super fan was was. Uh, uh, yes, we did have that conversation. When you get to know me really well, I will confide in you just how distraught I was when Heath Ledger passed. I... I was a wreck. I was a wreck. He is... probably... He's the, he's my second favorite knight, I would say. My second favorite fictional knight. Who's your life. first? Alana the Lioness. I'll explain later, because that's who my character is. <laughs> ah, that's fair. Resub hype! It's more than we could have hoped for, Prometheus. Oh my God! What I is more than we could have? I didn't for? quite catch it on the uh, the subscription. It it said uh, just just made it back to us alive. It's more than we could have hoped for. Awesome. <laughs> We're hyping over here. We're hyping for the Risa Risa. What's like a night call? I'd like to hype. I'd like to. Express grand hype for resub of Prometheus. Right? Sort of. 
My paladin's accent is quite posh, actually. She talks like this. Alright. So we're gonna do half of that mix in there. Boop. That's, or like half. And then you wanna press it in. Yay! Yay, Risa! Thank you, Prometheus! So you're supposed to put in most no bake. I've actually never made no bake bars before, so this is gonna be interesting. I have a feeling the bottom layer might not hold correctly because you're supposed to put a lot of butter in it, and I was like, no. So we're this is gonna be healthy. Yeah. But they had butter along the road, right? They would just, you know, yeah. ask for it in a nice way from the villagers. Well, I got us the all natural peanut butter, um, which has usually has more oil in it than like Jiffy. Um, dang. So I'm hoping that the oil from the peanut butter will. And then we're gonna take some. Scientifically, that. Some cherries. Toast them on top. Cool. I, I should wash, wash my hands. I should have too. I have makeup on my hands. Alright, so those are gonna chill for a hot second. And then we've got our chocolate chips. We've got like seven ounces. Chocolate chips? Yeah. What? So they're gonna melt on our double boiler. Yay. Which, which you can't see because you don't have an oven cam. The sword just keeps getting. Sorry. <laughs> Sword's in the way. Sharp. I Sharp made that edges. sword. Lexi made this sword, guys. I did. Check it out. From, uh, it's my, uh, my, uh, god killer sword. There it is. I was like, an oath breaker is not a sword. I have to see if I can remember how to hold this properly. Because I did technically learn how to use this. It actually this fits summer. in here. Oh, yeah? Like, perfectly. Nice. It also fits in here. I'm just gonna, I'm hungry, so I'm just gonna eat this. I want to taste. I want a little, little taste. Um, mmm. Mmm. Mm, half done. says, Lexi, this is dope. Well Thanks. done. It's a uh, paper mache, tape, gold paint, and a rope to give it the, like, appeal of... Oh, an actual rope is in there? Yeah. Hmm. It's awesome, yeah. Showing off the sword. It actually has metal in the center. Really? Because um, I bought it from... We have a military surplus store here. In Hollywood, um, right? No, I bought it from the one in Burbank. Oh, okay. And I actually got that because the handle was super damaged, and so that's normally like a $20 sword that I got for 6 bucks. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna cover the handle anyway. I'm so jealous. So I bought the damaged handle, and then made the handle and everything myself. But in order to get this little crevasse going, because <laughs> it had like a big thing on top, and I was like, oh, it's fine, it's like foam. Pommel. Yeah. Uh, I was like, it's fine, it's foam. No, there's a metal rod in the middle. So did so, you build this up? Yeah. Mm. Once I cut into it, I was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> sweet broadsword. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah sweet broadsword. Yeah, yeah, brah. Yeah. Brah. Jeez, I want to encounter a knight, a paladin in Dungeons and Dragons, who talks like this. What's up, man? Did you just complete your oath? Yeah, I just took my oath. Dude, which oath did you pick? I picked the oath of vengeance, man! What? Who do you want to take vengeance on, man? I don't know, bro. It just sounded sweet. Okay, sweet, man. I was like, where are you pulling this from? It's just... This is what happens when I go to bed at night after a long game of Dungeons & Dragons. You made paladins seem way cooler in there. Okay. I like paladins. Um, yes, I have done a LARP to answer your question. Um, <laughs> why is this happening? This is happening because we have a Dungeons and Dragons series um, where we cook geeky Dungeons and Dragons. I think they meant why is your accent happening? Oh, because that's because it's Jess. Hello, welcome, that Jess? welcome to me. Um, welcome to me. What was I saying? Uh, you like paladins? Oh uh, no, LARPing. Uh, I did a LARP recently, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, a, um, a sitting room LARP, or, no, what do you call that? A LARP where you don't fight. It's a LARP where you solve puzzles and you interact with each other, kind of like a murder mystery. Um, and you have not yet done one, right? No. 
Yeah, but we're so down. So Lexi's pouring on the melted chocolate. Yes. I'm gonna food cam you up. Right now it's kind of covered though. Oh, it smells amazing. Nice! Beautiful! And then... Boop, boop. So she's spreading out the chocolate. Ideally, I should have grabbed a smaller pan. Um, oh, why? Because the ingredients aren't just quite fit, uh, fitting in it? Yeah. Well, you want it to have like a thick, even layer over the top. Oh, okay. So that when you bite into it, you have um, a nice little chocolatey center. I think it looks pretty even so far, though. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, it was a LARP escape room. What? I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, they made their own escape room. That's and so it was this real, like, it was insane. Like, they were master game makers. It was nuts. They had, like, black light stuff underneath paintings, puzzles, like, hidden chests. My friend Kaylee was sitting in a room for like two hours straight waiting for her role to pop up in the game because no one found her. It was crazy. What? It was crazy. I loved it. Um, so I am sprinkling in our roasted coconut chips from our oh, nice. Warlock episode. Yay! Yeah, Jess and I are trying to be more frugal because I got kind of out of hand last month. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm reusing a bunch of our ingredients. Which I feel like is also what a paladin would do. I think they're resourceful. Yes, definitely. So, I was like... Not as resourceful as the hunter-gatherer classes, however, I would say. Like druids and rangers who can set traps. Well, I don't know. I don't think, like... I think Dahlia was not resourceful. I would not have yeah, put her that way. Yeah, it just depends on... I think it depends on the character. Yeah, for sure. Because some paladins are just very charismatic, and others can actually survive. I don't know if it's just because I'm so used to uh, Zimmera that I was like, paladins aren't charismatic. <laughs> well, they're supposed to be charismatic except for spellcasting. That's their spellcasting mod? Yeah. I thought it was constitution. Mm -hmm. Charisma. Oh. Well, I messed some stuff up. <laughs> so, now so now you're smooshing it down? Yeah. I'm smoothing it out. I'm just gonna use my hands. Oh my Screw god, it. these are gonna be so good. Right? This looks pretty easy to make as well. Yeah, no. I went for... Because also, when you're in a fight, I feel like eating has to have sustenance, but it doesn't have to be difficult. So I was going for ease and having a lot of like nutrients in it. Mm. So like peanut butter is one of the greatest things you can do when you're on the run, is just grab a spoonful of peanut butter because it's high in fat, so like don't eat it all the time. But... It is a decent source of fat, and it keeps you full for a very long time. There's a word for that. Some metabolic something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, was this was this a futuristic LARP system? Um, hey, synthetic divine. Uh, it was set in present day, so we were all modern day characters um, with magic. It was fun. It's hard to cook in armor. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in a room for two hours like that, you start to rethink your life. She probably did, yeah. I feel like knowing Kaylee, she was just like... <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just waiting. giggling. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so these are going in the freezer. Alright. Yay! Down. Behind the symbol of the Lord's Alliance. If you didn't know... Those are heavy. If there are any noobs in the chat... I didn't know what it was. It's not really a new thing. It, this is like you have to play a lot of D&D &D and then you finally find out. I wouldn't be able to know this on site. This is the Lord's Alliance, which my character is a part of. Which is a faction. What is your character's name? My character's name is the Sphinx. That's the Sphinx? The Sphinx. You may call me the Sphinx. I'm a paladin who has taken the oath of devotion. I am devoted to Akari, the goddess of air. God bless you. And I don't have a very good sense of humor. Oh, goody. I'm very similar to Brienne, in fact. Um, I'm tall. Actually, no, I'm not tall, but I'm stout. I'm heavy. 
and I look like a boy, I have flaming red hair, and I'm based off of the character Alana the Lioness by one of my favourite young adult fantasy authors, Tamara Pierce. You should give it a read if you haven't. Um, and I'm, I am in fact lawful good, but we are still going to have that conversation about alignment. But Sphinx is very uppity. <coughs> I have a stick right up my arse, and I serve the good, the greater good, and I serve the will of my goddess. Oh, Cody. Who are you? We just never create characters where I'm gonna get along! <laughs> uh, so I chose Oath of Vengeance because I like to not do things the way they should be. Hmm. Okay, so when I was doing my paladin research, um, accents, where's the booze? Um, when I was doing my paladin research, a lot of, I'm also a big history nerd, and I like going back and looking at previous D&Ds, like second edition, third edition, when I'm picking, because I'm curious to see the history of how the characters and what, or the classes and races have evolved. Paladins have always been like, I'm the white knight! Yes. And I think that's why they're trying to introduce the Oath of Vengeance and the Oath of... But which pick? I picked Oath of Vengeance. What's the new one? The new one is, um... Oath of Conquest. Oh, that... Because yeah. that's in Xanthar's? Yeah, that was super intense. Yeah, so I think they're trying to make it more, like, open. I don't like that, though. Like, I kind of want Paladins to just have a stick in the butt. But they're kind of like clerics. They're a little too similar to clerics, I think, and maybe that's why they're going in that direction? I'm not sure. Well, when we do a cleric episode, I'll look up the history of a cleric and yeah. then get back to you. Yeah. But yeah, I I kind of liked, I think the fairy tale aspect of me immediately was like, oh, Prince Charming. Like, See, I think of A Knight's Tale, where they're just like raggedy and they don't, they're not good. They're not good people. <laughs> that's interesting. Because yeah. like, when I was reading, um, and I watched a lot of YouTube, and I always think it's interesting to find YouTube clips where people really like that class. Mm. So there was this one dude that was super into it, and was just like, no, it's the best class, because, you know, they just do everything correctly, and, like, they play by the law, and I was like, oh man, you're just like a paladin in real life, like, just think you're correct. Um, but yeah, the whole lawful good thing... Paladins have always had to be lawful good until now. Until 5th edition? Mm -hmm. Really? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sphinx is lawful good, so she went along on that train. Uh, and what are you? Uh, I, my character's name is Rue. Rue? Mm-hmm. And she is lawful neutral. Okay. Yeah. So you're um, not good. You're not a good girl. No, I wouldn't say that being neutral means not a good girl. Um, the reason that I chose neutral is because of her backstory. And um, so the whole point of Oath of Vengeance is that you kill evil. Like, it do you don't have to be on, like, this bloodlust sort of pattern. You just kill evil. So, like, she goes by the law as much as she can, but if the greater good will be saved and she'll kill. So that means you are actually uh, neutral good. Because you're not lawful. Because you won't always follow the law. If you're lawful Wait. neutral, that means you'll follow the law no matter what, whether it's good or evil, that you fall somewhere between that. But if you don't always follow the law, but that means you're neutral. Following the law doesn't mean like following the town's law. It means like following... The law, it's the law of whatever you think is the law. Right. So, yeah. like, to her, that is her law. And, like, she won't break that for anything. Mm. Like, she wouldn't go and rob. She would uphold the law as much as she can. But I think it needs to be specified, because if, if we're going by that logic, any chaotic character could be like, I'm lawful to myself. To my, like, Robin Hood could be lawful to his own law. Isn't Robin Hood lawful? No, he's chaotic good. He breaks the law. He specifically breaks the law. So he's chaotic. 
That's huh. why we have to go deeper with this whole alignment thing because you have we have to define what lawful is. Yeah, I guess when I was looking at it today, because as a oath of vengeance, technically you have to be lawful good or lawful neutral. <clears throat> let's ask your DM. Right. Let's look up. Um. Let's look up. Um. What do we? What? Uh. Okay. Yeah, the <laughs> alignments. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what. Let's see, see what the I book can't says. play a paladin. I don't like them. I. I, like them. I okay. think they are necessary to the group. I will say that though. <clears throat> like just because I don't desire to play one, I don't think I'm not saying that that and it means less of them. They are absolutely necessary. I just don't want to play one. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like, I understand their value. Because, um, honestly, a paladin could be... Like, and another reason I chose Oath of Vengeance is because you get Dimension Door after a certain point. And Banishment. Oh, uh, well, if you want Dimension Door, you could always just pick a Spellcaster. But it's Paladin League. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> according to the book, Lawful is... Um, you follow... A code of you you stay you you stay within the limits of a code of tradition, loyalty, or order. Yeah. Whether whether you're good, neutral, or evil. Lawful uh, good would would be like the codes of society. Right. Whereas Definitely lawful no. evil would be right. tradition or loyalty to like your like a devil or something. Right. And then neutral is. Um, you act in accordance of, with law, tradition, or personal codes. Like, monks are often lawful neutral. Yeah, a personal code. Yeah. So that would be Robin Hood. He has a personal code. Because Robin Hood doesn't just steal to steal. But you could say that about, like, you could say that about any character ever who exists. But like I they don't... They act accordingly to their own personal code. But I don't think you could put Robin Hood... Okay, so somebody goes and actively steals just to steal. It's chaotic. But Robin Hood is working under a law. Like, he's not stealing to be evil or to be wrong. He's stealing because that. And he's not even stealing in his eyes. It's a code. If he thought he was stealing, mm -hmm. he wouldn't do it. I disagree, because if you take a look at the Game of Thrones characters, they can't all be the same. You could all. You could justify all of them as they are all acting according to their own personal code. Arya, she has a very clear directive. She wants to kill people who have done her wrong. That is her own personal code. It's what she lives by. And she sticks closely to it. I just so don't agree that- oh. No. Hey, thank you for the subscription, Goose! No, not at all. She's not lawful. She's- But I'm- What I'm saying is, you have to have, like, a strong code. Like, Arya doesn't have a code or, like, a- Because Robin Hood's whole thing is, like, he's a man of honor. He doesn't steal from- Like, a- well, that's why he's good, I think. I think he's good. But if he's breaking the laws of society, like, that's definition Robin Hood. I think he cannot be lawful. So, but that's, but in that definition, you're saying that lawful, you have to uphold the law of the town and yeah. only that. See, I just don't no, agree. No, not just the town, but, like, society. Right. I just don't think, I think that pigeonholes you. Because, like, Zimmera definitely didn't always go with, like, the law of society. She wasn't lawful. She wasn't? Mm -hmm. How was she? I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, she was... I thought she was... Neutral good, I think. Who was... There was somebody that was lawful in our party. I was lawful good. What? Adele was lawful good. Because she wouldn't... She wouldn't... She was like, I'm prim and proper, I'd never break the law. I always do well at what society thinks. But see, I think then that is going to borderline make characters stop. Where, like, you have to... Does that make sense? Like, a lawful character has to be like, oh, I'm good, and I do the good thing. I don't know. I Well, that's, the, that's what I like about Sphinx. Because Sphinx is easier to play because she... We'll always just do what is good according yeah. to the law. Right. Like, if we're ever like, you know what, we're hungry, we're gonna starve, we need to leave someone behind, we need to kill a horse, whatever, she would be like, I ethically cannot. Exactly. And that is it. She will not be swayed. 
or if she is swayed, then that's a character journey. Yeah. Like moving from lawful to not lawful. Yeah. I guess this, to me, in, like, the beauty of D&D is being creative with it. And so I feel like that would be a thing for your DM to be like, what do you think Robin Hood is? Because if I were DMing, I would absolutely be like, yeah, he's lawful. In our campaign, I would let him be that way. You, you can, yes, but I think that it would definitely have to be a discussion because your DM has to know if you're acting like your character. Because so, then right. you have like the critical role. You have um, you have uh, Ashley's character, her first character, um, the cleric. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? It's a short um, name. Ooh. Oh my god, what is Ashley Johnson's character? Oh my god, this is such a brain fart. Uh, Ashley... Oh my gosh. Um. What? Yasha. Pike. Pike. There we go. Pike. I was like, Pim? Pim. So Pike started out as a certain alignment, and then because she was like, right, like, killing some something or someone several times, Matt was like, you're not lawful anymore. Right. Or you're not good. Whatever right. it was. Like, Robin Hood would never kill. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's, so he's definitely good. Right. Good, good. Good guy. Yeah. I don't know. I would, if I were DMing, I would definitely make him lawful, but he has to stick to his code. So, like, if he stole from someone who was poor, or did break the law, mm. then I would be like, oh, you're not acting lawful to yourself, okay. therefore. Okay, I can get on that train. Does that yeah. make sense? I yeah. was like, how do I explain this? I can get on that train. Yeah. If you, if there's a discussion, if it's, because that is going outside the box. If you're like, right. I'm not lawful, but I'm... I'm lawful. Right. To my, yeah. I can get, I can, yeah. Especially because, like, Robin Hood in lore is known for, like, upholding the law, and he feels immense Rogue guilt. Rogue law. Yeah, he feels immense guilt about stealing, though, and tries to, like, fix it in other ways. So, like, and he doesn't try to, like, I don't know, no, 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 no it's still iffy to me, though, because he's literally breaking the law. He's literally breaking a but law of society. So how can you put him up as a lawful good character compared to my Sphinx, who's a lawful good character, who always abides by the law, as opposed to him, who, um, you know, steals. Like, like how can they possibly fit in the same category? In the same campaign? Because I don't, like, to me, I'm not, like, putting them in boxes, to me or mine, but work. how does it work for you? Like, to me, it's not like a blanket statement for everyone. So, like, if mm -hmm. if you made Robin Hood chaotic good, I don't agree. Because he's not going around, like, messing up a bunch of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he would, he follows a law very, very closely. This is what I like about D&D, because you have these characters who are like, yeah. Though, I mean, but it is true that there is a whole discussion about, I mean, 5e did open up alignments. Like, you can be whatever you want. And yeah. so, it is a debate worth having, and alignments don't always mean the same thing to everyone. So, I can, I can definitely agree that it's just a discussion with the DM, with the campaign, etc. But, you know what, a lot of people don't like alignments. I truly do like alignments. I love them. That's why I'm like kind of passionate about it. Beca like, yeah, because I mean, as an actor, I like having guidelines to work by, and it's a challenge. If, like, if you pick an alignment, then it makes it easier to be more specific <clears throat> with your character and to make specific choices that make sense. And it furthers your separation between yourself as the player and yourself as the character. Right. Because you can be, I, I can be Sphinx being lawful good, I will not do that, I will absolutely not do that. I can be vehemently disagreeing with what your character wants, and you know because you know that I am sticking to an alignment, you're right. like, that's not Jessica, that's her character. Right. But if I'm just doing whatever I want, according to whatever whim I have each right. session, sh it's gonna be harder for you to know if like, I'm bringing shit, I'm bringing shiitake <laughs> in from, my day, from my work right. day, if I'm just being upset about something, or if I'm truly <clears throat> acting like my character. Well, to me, like, there are guidelines in a sense. 
to alignments, to races, to classes, to yeah. all of that. And that is, to me, it's a language between you and your DM. The reason that games are interesting and the reason some you enjoy better than others is because each game, well, each DM in like, that span is entirely different because they're guidelines. To me, they're not like these hard, you must follow this. Yes, I agree. But if you take them away, then you lose the communication between a DM and a player, mm -hmm. and the freedom winds up getting sucked away, actually. It's like, you need those guidelines. Like, like having the chaotic, yeah. like, you need that communication yeah. for, like, where to agree to. It's just a matter of making the game a little easier on everyone, yeah. I think, as well. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. The important question with Robin Hood, did he do what he did because he believed that his code was absolute or because he believed his actions were good? He hmm. believed his code was absolute regardless of his views, he was lawful. He believed he simply was doing what was good, then he was instead good. And by good, I assume you mean neutral good. Yeah. Because you can be lawful good or neutral good. Right. He was definitely yeah. good. So do you think? So do you think it was because he believed his actions were good? Or because his code is absolute. That's just what he thinks, that's like how his world works. It's like an abstract right. law well, yeah. that he abides by. And that's why there's so many different versions of Robin Hood. Yeah. In some versions, I think he is lawful good, and in other versions, I think he's neutral good. Yeah. So I guess it was true to how you play him. That's a, that's a really good <clears> point, <throat> Synthetic. That's a really good point. It's a good way of putting it. I'm awful good. <laughs> Hi, Eddie! Welcome to the debate of uh, alignments in D&D. Uh, okay, we can probably turn off this music again. Alright, so while we were having that heated debate about Robin Hood randomly, I threw in bacon, bacon and uh, some turkey into the skillet. It smells amazing in here. So I wish you could smell this kitchen right now. So I'm going to throw in some chili powder, because that's how you make chili. Yay! Because we're making chili for the road. Um, okay, so we, we missed some uh, some conversation here. So, Robin Hood was a secret cannibal. Mm, huh. Huh. Ah, okay, so Goose, Pike, thank you. Pike, sorry we missed it. Oh my god, everyone was like, Pike, Pike! <laughs> um... Lawful doesn't necessarily require agreement with society's laws, but does require the acceptance and adherence to a specific set of laws originating outside yourself. Right. So Robin Hood would have to, right, that would have to be a determination mm -hmm. that would have to be made, yeah. The Kevin Costner movie would like a word with you. <laughs> she murdered a dro door from the Underdark and her holy symbol began to crack apart. Yeah, okay, so that's what it was. Sorry, we like completely missed all of this, yeah. Um... Whoa, man! Chaotic, chaotic good? That was the original debate, yeah, because I would I would have said that he is chaotic good, and she said that he could be lawful good, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Um... So, chaotic good adheres to what they believe is good, even if their beliefs go outside ways the law, whereas a lawful neutral adopts a set of particular set of laws and believes that those laws are what is good, is good and right and define morality. So by Same. that definition, he's chaotic good. What? No, he's lawful good. No, because he says chaotic good adheres to what they believe is good, even if they believe, even if their beliefs go outside what the law is. Right, but look at where did whoa, 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 you whereas, just said something? Whereas lawful neutral, neutral adopts a set of particular set of laws and believes that those laws are what is good right. and right. So again, it's how you play him, because there are definite versions where his law is right. Like, in but his head, it's not good or bad. But He's the law like, isn't outside of himself, it's his own set of laws. The Merriman. I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. Awesome. Oh my god, I love that movie so much! I love that movie! Uh, Blind Seer is agreeing with you. He did follow his own law in a sense. Um, Thank chaotic, Blind Seer. Chaotic good has someone acting as though they, as they feel their conscious feels they should, regardless of how others feel or expect. So Half Donut's actually arguing chaotic good. See? Because, so it, it, it's really yeah. all up to your own interpretation, and, and I guess that's kind of the conclusion you had to come to was talking to DM. Yeah. Like, you all have really good points. Like, 
I'm convinced in every direction. I would still say in my campaign I would make him chaotic good. And I, in your campaign you would allow lawful good. I would actually force him into lawful good because... No, not force him, but be like, if you want to play this this way, I would prefer you to play as lawful good and present that as a challenge. For like, are you going to... Because Robin Hood's also, like, in lore, his thing is upholding as much of the law and doing the right thing as he can. So, like, putting, oh, really? him, yeah, putting him in the box... Like, he thinks hmm. he's doing the right thing because, like, society has not... What is it? It's like society has taken away from the poor or whatever. Oh, I have a point to make, if I may. Yeah. So I made it. I made a, a, a comparison to Arya earlier mm -hmm. because a lot of people might argue that she's chaotic good. Yeah. Or, I mean, when she started killing people, it became chaotic neutral. Um, but she knows that she is not doing good. Right. She is like, I mean, maybe a little. She's like, yeah, I'm getting rid of people who are terrible. But like, she's truly following her own agenda. Right. Like, she's like, I'm going to do this because this is what I want. And that with no regard to whether it is right or wrong in a view society. Robin Hood knows he's breaking the law, but he has chosen morally that this is something that is good. And he's following that through. So there is a very distinct difference. But that to me, now that I'm saying it out loud, that to me falls on the scale between good and evil, not necessarily right. lawful and chaotic. Because I'm like, you, in the argument, like if, um, I would argue in certain ways that um, Arya could be evil, lawful evil, lawful evil. Because she's going, like, didn't you say when you're reading the book your own agenda and like your own order? Um, uh, well, let's, let's see. I think when you say lawful, this was my issue when we were. No, it's not your own. Uh, let's see. Okay, so chaotic good. Let me turn this down a little bit. This is some loud medieval music. Okay, so chaotic good creatures act as their conscience directs with little regard for what others expect. This is what Half Donut quoted. Yeah. Copper dragons. Okay, yeah. Yeah, look at lawful evil. Creatures methodically take what they want within the limits of a code of tradition, loyalty, or order. So, like, but that's lawful evil. Right, I said lawful evil. Oh. For Arya. Oh, for Arya. Yeah, like, technically, in that, when she started murdering people. Um... Because she has her own loyalty and her own order. Like, her loyalty is to House Stark and, like, Vengeance. She would be a paladin with a vengeance oath. <laughs> Uh, no, because the thing is, I think, uh, sure, I think you can make that argument, but the other ones fit better. Because no, they definitely fit better. I was just yeah. saying in juxtaposition that, like, chaotic neutral, they follow their whims, holding their own personal freedom above all else. That fits better. And then, neutral, steer clear of moral questions and don't take sides. She took a side. Yeah. She took a moral stance, for so sure. She's so definitely she's, not neutral. She's not neutral neutral. Um... Is she still good, though? Like, I don't think so. I don't think so, either. I... I think she could be chaotic. Wait, you just said neutral doesn't take a side? Yeah, they don't so take she sides. Be, she's not chaotic evil. Um... Not, not Joffrey. I think she's chaotic neutral. But didn't you just say neutral doesn't take a side? Neutral evil is the alignment of mm. those who do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. She has lost some of her humanity, but I do think she still has compassion. So I don't think she's... Mm, I don't think she's evil yet. I think she could be evil, but I think we want to reserve evil for people like Littlefinger and Ramsay Bolton. Joffrey. You know, and Joffrey. Like, there has to be a line somewhere. I feel like we should start a new show called What's Your Alignment? <laughs> a new... a new segment! What's your alignment? On Thursdays at 8 o'clock. <laughs> like, whose line is it anyway? What's your alignment? <laughs> Arya for sure is chaotic good with dashes of neutral evil. Yeah, she will do what she wants, and God's help you stand in her way. Yeah. Just to, just be a Lannister, to be honest. Um, but that's the thing. She has to pick an alignment and then try and stay in it. Like, she's definitely swaying out of an alignment right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
She could would be fucked evil by the end of this. You know. She could. Yeah. Good. Uh, good on Game of Thrones has become <laughs> hard to come by. That's true. I think Brienne is still good. Oh yeah, absolutely. classic paladin, classic paladin Brienne. <clears throat> um, Jamie, my favorite character in the books. He's another wonderful paladin. Uh, he went from neutral evil, I think, to I think he truly is good now. Oh yeah, he I love is good. Jamie. I think he really wants. I think it's a struggle. I think he's right on the line, and Cersei is keeping him very close to the line, but I think he's good. I, I, I think that personally. Oh yeah, no, I agree with that. She's certainly not lawful evil. She doesn't stay within the bounds of traditions. She, she, seems to... she does what she wants, however she wants. But isn't she doing it all out of loyalty to her family? No, she's doing it out of personal vendetta. Oh, because right, these are all this. Because so she's the not. Hound murdered Hot Pie. Right, right, right. You know, like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. No, you're right. It's not a, like the entire time I was having this argument, I was like, no, it's, she's been doing it for no. Well, we, well, fair it's, enough though, because she, she, she also like knows about her mother, right, and everything. Um, yeah, Jamie definitely had an alignment shift. Um, Jon Snow is one of the few good people left. Yeah, he he is. He really is. He he's good. Yeah, he's, and Ned. Ned was good as well. People who, I mean, Ned died because he was good. Um, and that's how most of the good characters on Game of Thrones got their end. People's alignments can and do shift over time, which is another reason the D&D system overly pigeonholes a complex issue. I don't think so. I don't think D&D pigeonholes anything. <clears throat> I think they're offering it to you, um, perhaps in past editions, but in 5e, they say right in the book there's a whole paragraph that talks about how alignments are they they are a choice and they're fluid and, and they can change. So I, I, I think it's a strong uh, strong assertion to say that it's pigeonholed. I think so if your DM is like, No, it's you're chaotic good. Yeah, I think it's a then, DM thing. Then you can be pigeonholed. I yeah. completely agree with that. However, it should be fluid. And it, again, is a communication between you and the DM to be like, this is where I want my story to go without scripting it. Mm -hmm. Because you want to have the freedom to be like, I want to stay on this good path. Otherwise, you could talk to your DM and be like, I actually kind of want to go kind of evil. So <laughs> I want to pick that alignment or be like, hey, I want to go from this alignment and switch yeah. into that. Like, so you can see the transition happen. I'm interested in challenges that might push me towards that. Right. Yeah, my character um, in the campaign I'm in right now she actually, I can't, I don't, I can't, I don't want to say it out loud because we're, it's going to be a show and it's a secret still, but she is undergoing a massive change right now and it is likely going to change her alignment. And I'm so excited about Goosebumps, I'm so excited. <laughs> She's chaotic good and she might not be chaotic good anymore. She might be chaotic evil. I don't know. So that's not on me. Um, chaotic good more strongly adheres to whatever they believe is good, however, not necessarily for selfish reasons. Once the motivations become selfish, i.e. my actions are based on what I want, your shift more towards neutral and or evil, which is exactly <clears throat> what I think Arya is. It's all like her own thing. I it's think Arya is shifting into evil. What is? Ugh. No. Like, I just feel like she's starting to shift into evil. Like, she's in neutral now, but she's yeah. shifting that. I mean, she, because she's, <clears throat> I mean, go figure, like, she's been orphaned, basically, and, uh, not basically, she has been orphaned, oh, and yeah. all, her siblings are, are dying, and everyone is dying, and she has seen <clears throat> the worst, like, how old is Arya again? Uh, she's supposed to be, like, 13? In the first season, right? In the first season, she's supposed to be, like, 10 or 11. So she's 13 now? 13 or 14, yeah. That is a rough puberty, man. Yeah. Yeah. She had it even rougher in the books. I love the cooking cosplay. It truly feels like seeing your Westerosi kitchen. Well, thanks! We're going for, um... Paladin. D&D Paladins, but as our conversation has, has gone, we've talked about Robin Hood, Jamie, Brienne, uh, Heath Ledger in A Knight's Tale. <laughs> and we haven't talked about his alignment yet. Um, Alana the Lioness. 
Still don't uh, know who that is. So, can I help you? Uh, you yeah, you want to chat with that onion? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, before you start the story of who Alana is, while we've been talking, I threw in, I chopped a green pepper, threw that in there, and then there is the rest of our bacon. So what it is, is Trader Joe's is my hero, and they have all of this. Yep. Okay. Um, they have this wonderful pack, and it's called like bits and pieces or ends and pieces, and it's cheaper than regular bacon. Um, I think it's like three ninety nine or four ninety nine for a pound of bacon. Yeah, which Dang. is cheap. And so what it is is it's all these imperfect <laughs> pieces that they couldn't put into a pack. So some pieces are more fatty, some pieces are more meaty, but they couldn't put it into a pack, so they shove it in this thing. And it honestly, that smell is that. Yay! Like, and it tastes so good, and it's uncured, and it's just natural. So that's what I'm using, and I'm using probably three fourths of a pack. I used half with the turkey, and like sauteed that up. I'm only separating it because we have a smaller skillet. Um, with chili, the beautiful thing is you just kind of throw everything in to a pot. So I'm gonna brown everything, and then we'll throw it back together in the end. Oh, and there's a one stalk of celery. In normal chili, you're going to do more. But I was going for like an oath breaker feeling and just kind of like <laughs> shifting all of the stuff over a little. <laughs> That's cute. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Alana. So, Alana the Linus. Um, has anyone in the chat read the Alana the Linus series by Tamara Pierce? Kaylee and I love that series. Cooking with craisins must, must make anything good. <laughs> Lex is a domestic goddess who knows everything. Uh, I try, I try. Heath Ledger in an ice hill is totally chaotic good. Yes, I agree <clears> with that. I definitely agree with that. Yep, I agree He's too. He's the bestie best. Um, so, Alana Linus is a series. She's a girl who disguises her- it's a young adult series. She disguises herself as a boy and uh, undergoes training to be a knight. And so the first book is, she goes through her like page training and I think she becomes a squire and then the next book she becomes a knight, but she also wields magic. So unlike another hero that is written in the same world, Kel, Keladry, um, Keladry does not have magic. She is actually like a true Brienne, like she's a warrior. Alana has healing magic and, and like shaman magic eventually. It's just awesome. like purple fire. Um, mm. But her story is so cool because she like has so many challenges. She sticks up to the boys. Um, she competes <clears> with them. She her she has like amazing friends. She falls in love with the the king of rogues, who's like super sexy. Is this she, like a big book? It's a it's no it's it's pretty short. It's a series of four, and there's a whole world. There's one where there's like a druid type girl as well. Do you have them? I do not own them, actually, unfortunately. You I wish I did. Text me later what it is. So yeah. I can add it to yeah. My, uh... They're so good. And she meets a character <clears throat> named Thayette, which oh! Kaylee plays as a <clears throat> as a paladin as well. But in the in the book, she wait. Thayette was she was a paladin? Because didn't Ka she play her? No, one? Kaylee plays her as a paladin in D and D, but she's not a paladin in the books. But wasn't she in the one off that we did? Probably, Kay yeah. Probably, yeah. I just didn't realize she was playing a paladin then. Uh, she may not have been. I'm not sure. She, she plays her as a paladin now. Actually... Is she a paladin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's an, I know she's an artificer and a paladin, so I might be getting them mixed up. Oh, artificer. Artificer? I was an artificer. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting them mixed up. Um... But... Yeah, uh... Kaya and Burry are really cool characters as well. They're fighters, but they're actually nobility. <coughs> she gets engaged to the prince, but she's like, I don't want to be a noble. Do the whole series? You're just going to ruin the whole series for me? It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. No, it's fight scenes. You know what's great? Falls of the Monk. Is that Kindle has overdrive now? Oh, yeah. So I use that. I've been having issues with it. So I might talk to you because you're a techie. A it's a little tough, yeah. But uh, yeah. sometimes my books don't show up. And I'm like, excuse you. I have overdrive on everything that I own. So like my phone, oh, really? my Kindle, my com you can get overdrive on your computer. Um, I have it on everything and my list is like 170 books long. Like, Do you guys know what overdrive is? Oh yeah, I guess 
I assume most know what it is. But Overdrive is an app that you can get, and it links to your library, so you can get ebooks and audiobooks for free. Mm -hmm. People, when I, I go to the library all the time, and I feel like I always get like a hello. Whoa, you go to the library? I've never been to the library here. Whoa, you get books for free? I'm like, yeah, I just get books. Like, for free? Like, when we see books are, like, around, like, shopping. I'm like, oh, sweet, I'm going to, like, request that from my library. I'm going to request it from across the country and get sent to my library. I'm scoop some to see a word. They're like, you can do that? You can just get it for free? I'm like, hell yeah! And then if you like it, you buy it. That's just me being frugal, though. Um, even if I really love books, I don't usually buy them anymore. No? Like, <clears throat> unless I go... I'm in the art of, like, collecting books now, and collecting, mm. like, not first edition, because I'm not a crazy person, because those are super expensive, <laughs> but just, I will only buy them if I find a cool edition of them. So, like, the Peter Pan version that I have is gold-leafed, and, like, all mm. of the illustrations are, um, like, stamped in instead of... That's just, really cool. Yeah, so, like, that's, those are the books that I get now. Will you do a Peter Pan episode? Uh, yeah! <laughs> <clears throat> um, Sword on Camera, that was made by Lexi. Yeah! I'm missing stuff. What am I missing? Um, oh, so what great, great battle did you have? Who did you beat up? Each other. Yeah. She hit me with her... Her... Brazer. Her bracer? Bracers? Is it what is it called? Bracer? 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 Tino, okay, yeah. what is it called? <laughs> yeah, Tino, what is it? Tell us. I don't know if it's a brazer or a bracer. It's one of the two. I go to the library just to chill sometimes, says Eddie Krueger. Yeah, library's a nice place. Yeah, I have a lot of work to do tomorrow on my computer. <laughs> I was going to go to a coffee house here in Los Angeles. I forgot where we lived for a second. I was like, Michigan. <laughs> um, and Hollywood. I, um, and... I was going to go to a coffee house that my old boss, or over the pie, owns now that I love. Um, and my roommate was like, you're not supposed to be spending money, because we're doing a, like, no spending money Monday through Friday thing. Oh, you are? Yeah, I have gotten on a train of being like, I got paid! Wow! <laughs> um, like, going to Disney and dropping, like, a hundred dollars. Not on my ticket. On, like, food and things. Like, nobody needs to do that. Uh, and so <laughs> I trying to cut back and he was like you know what you should do you should go and like do your work at the library and I was like I know I need like some sort of I need coffee for one when I'm doing any sort of work like editing writing mm. anything yeah and I need movement like I need like I have to have music or movement or something happening so like a library oh, okay. is too quiet gotcha I like it I like the quiet the quiet time. Bracers is correct, says Blind Seer. Synthetic, I am now downloading Overdrive. Honestly, yeah. Overdrive is amazing. And if like a book you really want, sometimes they have like two or three editions and then you can put them in a list and it'll be like, hey, here's your next book that's available. And they'll send you text alerts to be like, hey, your book just became available. Yeah. Oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah, I've I always want like really popular books though, because I'm a total three um, Witherspoon book club. <laughs> no, not quite. But like, I, um, I requested Ready Player One, and it took like two months to get it off hold. Yeah, I have a Wrinkle in Time right now because I don't want to see the movie until I read the book because oh. it's a series. Wrinkle in Time, I feel like you could just go across to the bookstore, right? Oh, Maybe okay. not now. Oh, pay for it though. That, that place is cheap. These books. Bookstore? Yeah. There's also the Odyssey, the Iliad. Odyssey. It's on. Oh, and uh, in NoHo. Yeah. yeah. I love that place. I haven't been inside, but it looks really cool. I got a really great version of Mrs. Dalloway for sixty-five cents. What's Mrs. Dalloway? It is. A oh, British. Yeah. Britlet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I read it. A, a stream of consciousness. Yep. Yeah. I was like, Jess. This seems right up your alley. How do you not? I don't think I liked it when I read it. I didn't it either. Was for school though, so. Um, everyone had read it and knew it really well. Then. So. All right, toss them in there, girl. Um, everyone had told me how much I would love it. If you know me, don't tell me I'll like something. 
I immediately will hate it. Like, psychologically, <laughs> something flips in my brain, and I don't like it anymore. And so, I didn't like Mrs. Dalloway, and I don't know if I really didn't like it, or... Um, it's a little tough. It's a little tough. Hi, Darius. Welcome to the chat. Cosplay and cooking. Yeah. It smells so good. Having a skull that close to the food can't be good. You know what? I actually washed that. The skull. I washed it because um, I licked it. In your other campaign? Uh, from my monster campaign, I licked it. And so I was like, I gotta wash this. And I'm I, glad I did because I washed it and it was like dirty. I thought it looked way cleaner this week. And I was like, why? What did you do to it? I cleaned it! Who's that? Anonymous donated 20 bucks? Thank, Thank you, you for that! Wow! That's awesome! Yay! Grocery! Groceries! Food for the gro money for the grocer! Money for the grocer! Ha, 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 ha. This isn't the Bard episode. <gasps> I need to stop. Oh, we get to do a Bard episode! When we do the Bard episode, I'm going to bring out my guitar and I'm going to sing for you all. Maybe that should be our next one. No, for our Bard episode, we can only sing. It's going to be an opera episode. No, I didn't assign... No, no, but opera is when you sing the whole time without any dialogue. Or a musical. Musical, you can talk. Operas, you can't talk. The musical doesn't have that parameter. It's a guideline. Oh, you're saying we should do a musical so we can talk. No, I'm saying we should do a musical so that... Because opera, you actually have like a specific tonality that you have to aim for. I don't... I'm not a soprano. I'm an alto! Okay, so we'll do... Oh, sorry. You're good. We'll do a D&D... &D music Musical episode for our bard series. A music Yeah! Was that Alicia or Elena? It was Elena. <laughs> it was a ghost. A ghost! Wait, my Michael Super fan's here? Yay! Edgar! You still can't change your name! <laughs> Oh my god. Edgar, how many days do you have left? Yeah. Like, do you have a ticker going in your house that's like, tick? <laughs> what's the countdown on that? Let me sober a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Is the skull real? Yes. Uh, no. She has POTUS. It's not real. POTUS will be very happy that you clean them. Yeah? Oh yeah, she's super, like, neat, freak, clean, everything. It's not real because, look, it's solid. You don't know. What if it was filled in, it gets a real skull filled in with cement? No. What if she murdered her enemies? This would be so much more fragile if it was real. Oh, you're assuming this is a girl. I was assuming it was a boy. Oh, no, I'm saying POTUS. Oh. POTUS is a girl. Well, oh. POTUS is a boy. POTUS is a mom. <laughs> All right, so I have this stuff um, that I brought from home, and it's, oh, I have to it. I'm sorry. My Michael Super Superman isn't allowed to change his name. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me get it to you. No, that was perfect. <laughs> um, so it looks kind of creepy, um, but it's a thing called Better Than Bullion. So Bullion oh, is little cute. Yeah. Um, this is actually. Bion. Yeah. That's my right, Prometheus. You know how to pronounce that, right? What? Bion cubes. French. Bullion. Ooh, I'm Ooh. just making that up. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, I immediately was like, we should do a Princess and the Frog episode so we can make, like, Cajun food. Ooh! I just watched that movie for the first time ever. Really? Like, two weeks ago. As a Disney fan, I finally watched that movie. Um, but yeah, it's better than bouillon, and we're using the roasted chicken kind because they don't have a turkey kind. Or at least I didn't have it on hand. Um, but it's about a tablespoon, maybe two. So that's going in there. That looks so good. That looks so good. That looks so good. And the reason that I'm using it is because <laughs> when we do these episodes, I'm coming straight from work, and chicken broth was not available. So, and this was. And it's just as good, honestly. Prometheus, maybe to which one? Is it bouillon or bouillon? Um, wait, Edgar, what'd you say? How many days? How many days we got? 24 days we have left. I almost want us Edgar. to have a ticker in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. How many days left until my medical super fan 
gets to return to whatever name he wants. So I just added two cups of water to the two-ish tablespoons of the better bouillon. Just keep <laughs> saying it. <laughs> uh, have you used broth cubes? I have. I like this better. So um, that's the only reason we're using that. Um, you're supposed to use more water. Um, I always do one cup to one tablespoon because I like my stuff to have flavor. I like it to punch you in the face. So that, yeah, that happened. It, it'll, it'll get you. I got punched in the face. Not by food though, by a fist. With a metal bracer on it. Which is... Ugh. These are actually... <clears throat> yeah. They're my Wonder Woman bracers. For Halloween. Did you paint them? I made them out of paper mache and... But I mean like for metal. today? No. Or this This is the same, same colors? It's yeah, a, same colors. It's, it's the... It's stuttering out of control thing. It's the... W. Nice. I love that. Two different spray paints. Is that a, oh my god. She did such a good job with this makeup, I thought it was real. <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't look great on camera, but in person, yeah. I is. thought it was real. Oh my god. Uh, I was like, oh dear, what happened? All you need is like a little bit of yellow. Yep. Yeah. No, there's a little in there. I see, yeah. Is that you or is that yellow makeup? I can't tell. It's I think it might be you. Yellow. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I got hit there and then covered it up. <laughs> I got a huge bruise from Barcelona somehow. Mm. That guy? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, this huge. Huge bruise. See this guy? So ironically enough, before Tough Mudder, I had been drinking. And one of the parts of Tough Mudder is you have to carry someone on your back. Oh. Um, and so in my drinking stupor, Dan was like, let's see if you can do this! I had a dress on, like a tight dress. Where were you? Uh, we were at Fat Dog. Oh, okay. In Noho, walking back to our house. And I did it for a while. Till I didn't. So that was... That was a while ago. That was like, like a month two ago? months ago. Yeah. Two months ago. Yeah. God. Funny story about that Tough Mudder. The whole thing got canceled. The wait, the whole thing got canceled? The whole thing. Because, okay. Well, you, lucky you. Wait, were you gone? No, you were here. Remember the weekend that it just rained? Yeah. Yeah, apparently a mudslide happened and like wiped out half of the event or like wiped out part of it where oh, wow. the medical team couldn't get there. So, my old roommate and friend Eric had actually flown down from Seattle to do the mutter and didn't get to. The entire weekend got canceled. Oh my god, did they get refunded or anything? Well, we were all volunteering, so... Yeah. But the flight. So now I'm doing one in Whistler, Canada. Whistler, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Where is Whistler in, in, in Canada? I've been <laughs> told that it is about an hour or two above Seattle, or oh. above Vancouver, sorry. Cool. I really want so, to go yeah. to that area. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's in June, so I have ample time to train. Yay! Uh, I kind of want to do it with you. Yeah? Yeah, I need an excuse to work out. Oh my god, let's do it! And we get strong. We can do damsels in dirt and just like film the whole thing. <laughs> this is us, guys! Ah, this is great! It's so great! Well, after carrying it's Dan. Preview. After carrying Dan on my <laughs> back for a block, in heels, no less. I think I'm true a, paladin. Mm, I'm a lady. It hurts. <laughs> that's how. That's how paladins. And I in had, Los Angeles. I'm not a paladin because I had drank so much that I didn't feel it till we got home. There's actually on my Instagram a post of like the cleanup because I got home and put my pajamas on and sat down and I was like, my knee hurts. Oh my god, no, that's the worst. <laughs> and Dan went, did you check it? And I was like, no. Cause I just get super happy after a certain point. And he was like, okay. So I rolled up my sweatpants and I had blood all the way. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, that is, that's kinda, that's hardcore. It's paladin. I guess if you put enough rum and whiskey in me, I will do anything. Apparently. So, how did you get your uh, bruise? I have no idea. No <laughs> idea. Woke up Elena one and I stayed out dancing until four one night, and then we walked two miles home. Ah, oh, yeah. And it probably happened then, because <laughs> I recall only about half of that night. So, I I remember most of it via my Instagram story. I woke up and I was like. I hope to God that this Instagram story is appropriate because I have no <laughs> recollection of doing it. You, I've known you long enough to know like when your drunk face comes on. Oh, I and, mean it's, yeah. And, I'm sloppy. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I was flipping through them and I was like, oh, 
Jess, and then it showed that there were like three more. Mm-hmm. It was like going yeah. for it. Oh, I hope you're having fun. Yeah, yeah, I was scared, but it was all it was all good. I didn't sound too stupid on it. No, you didn't. You were great. I enjoyed Thanks. it. I got to live vicariously through you. So. <laughs> Um, synthetic. I just searched every major library in my state and found none of the books I wanted. Okay, so, I have a tip for you. Synthetic, I hope you're listening. Go to WorldCat, short for World Catalog, WorldCat. Oh, yeah. You can request books from around the nation, and I believe around the world, as the name implies. Um, I usually just use it within the U.S. because I don't want to wait 800 years to get a book. That's in you another can, language, accidentally. Yeah. You can request books from, like, like New York to California, you know? Like, I, I, I do that, um, I have done it several times. I and haven't done it since college, but that was, like, a thing when we were in college to do. I think I did it recently for comic books. I needed some comic books, and it took forever to get here, but you can get them. Um, I would pay real money to watch Jess carry Lex. <laughs> it might happen at Death Mutter. Who knows? We have to switch it <clears> off. I'm going to cheat and check New York and LA libraries. There you go. Um, oh, Slizaro says Worldcat. Wait, did I, did you say that the same time as me or did I miss it? I feel, <laughs> I feel like maybe, wait. Hey, Pabs. Wow, the new oh. oh word oh world, I see, I see. Are these stories still there? I'm asking for a friend for science. <laughs> no, they are not still there. They lasted twenty four hours and they were gone, so there yeah. We Elena and I, um we tried to get into this club and we need to listen to this amazing music that's happening right now. It's the sinking of the Titanic. It's a little Irish, like it is the Titanic music. Yeah, it does. Uh, Alina and I tried to get into this club, Uh and we were not successful because apparently you needed tickets to get in that night, even though I didn't say anything about that on the website. Hashtag you're up. (sighs) So all these teenagers were there, like we have our tickets on our phones, and we were like, "Uh, you didn't find any teenage Spanish boys to be like, hey, it was sold out, and we tried, we tried talking to the guards, like. Is there any way we can get in? I'm American. No, go away. They were mean. They were not having it. They did not. Here in LA, I feel like you could be like, hi, um, where's the entrance? I don't know. And they're like, oh, oh uh, well, you know, just come on in or whatever. Not there. Not in Barcelona. Nope. Elena, Elena's nodding at me like, nope, she agrees. Um, so anyway, we met up with these this group of 19 year olds. And oh my god! we went across the street. Beepies. Took a shot from a really uh, crabby bartender and walked for who even knows how long. Were you guys like, we a were, super long time? We to I think it was like a mile to get there. Probably a and mile. Then two miles to get. Home. Yeah, we walked for like forty minutes. Took, I took a left for two blocks and then a right for two blocks <laughs> and then another right. We were just <laughs> blindly following these kids and we ended oh, up in this. That was one of your Instagram stories. Yeah, where you're like. I'm and I yeah. was like, oh, hey, please tell me. Oh, yeah, that. I didn't know it. <laughs> I was like, he's 19 years old. How did you know it? Yeah. How, How did you know, know it? Roger. That Roger, Kama, so and Agatha. But that was not how you pronounce his name, though. His yeah, it was something a little weird. different, yeah. Also, my cat is meowing for food. Is it? Can I get it, or can you get it for yeah. me? Thank you. She All right, so while be, Jess is getting my cat the food, <laughs> I added some garbanzo yeah. beans and then black beans. Uh, in the uh, oath breaker sort of sense, because garbanzo beans don't usually go in chili, but I like them. That sounds amazing. Pebbles, come on, Melrose, not pebbles. Pebbles, Pebbles, come here. That's how Hostile Two starts. <laughs> Worldcast essentially taught me that many of the libraries I've checked do have a number of the books I want, just not in digital form. Yeah, I usually request them in the in the analog form. Analog. Um. <laughs> Ow. Give me a lot more. <laughs> hey, Elena! Half Donut says hi! Meow. It's gone. Yeah. I'll talk she- about it later. Melrose had to be fed. I would not like to see a hangry Melrose. She meows like crazy. It's very annoying. 
See, this is why I'm happy you're still alive. Thanks, Prometheus. We we were mm. smart. We left our passports and one form of payment locked away in the hostel. So that if we got robbed slash kidnapped, we'd still have payment. Half Donuts is high. Hey. Were you shouting at me? Yeah. No, oh, so yeah, just that. that you I know, yeah. Yeah, highway. Sorry. <clears throat> Tell my queen I said hi as well, says my Michael Superfan slash Edgar. Hi, Edgar. <laughs> That's much smarter. Like, when we did it, we left our passport, or no, we left our driver's license. Because we didn't bring a second form of payment. Like, we each only brought one card. <clears throat> oh. And so we just put our driver's licenses in, and as we were leaving Paris, I was like, we should have left our passport in there. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, but would people, like, because we were drinking a lot, and I get like, carded everywhere. And even though the drinking age is much younger over there, I still got asked for my ID a couple times. You did? You mm-hmm. did? When I was studying when I was 20, I did not get carded. Yeah. There was one night where we went to, like, a offbeat Italian restaurant to get... Because she got obsessed with carbonara when we were you there. I think you look younger than 18? Or 16? Whatever it is in Europe? I think it's 18. But I think they, like, don't even care. Mm-hmm. No, they, they don't, like, but this... younger than you're 16. I think this was, like, a very family-owned restaurant that might have already had, like, an issue. Mm. So I was like, that's okay. Yeah, I look, I look young. You must. <laughs> is this music okay for everybody? Just let us know if it's too loud. But I like it. No, hostels are not that bad. They're, they can nice. be. They can be terrible. I've seen a terrible one in London. But ours is really nice. There's this little boutique hostel called... Casa Kessler in Barcelona. Barcelona. It's very nice. It's very nice. What's in the bowl? Did you answer that already? Oh, uh, it's turkey and bacon. They can. We can show you on the food cam. Ready? <clears throat> Blonde hair does make you look younger. I feel like there's something about it. Bacon and turkey and chickpeas. Nope, there's no chickpeas in there. Not yet. They're no, in the pan. Not not yet. The, the, the skillet. There will be chickpeas in there. Um, I was also with my friend who looks eerily similar to me. People often think we're related. Or in I the case of Europe, so. they thought we were twins. It's so <laughs> weird. I have, a, I have a brunette friend. People like, are you sisters or twins? And we're like, does she have blue eyes? No. Weird. I know. We're like, no. Well, because her eyes are so dark, or my eyes are so dark, and she has green eyes, I think people mm. are always like, oh, you must be sisters, huh? Um, Two white girls who are blind in a different country. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. You can eat a lot of that because we we're running out of. I don't know where to put it all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, uh. Yeah. Funny story. If you cook turkey with bacon, it's incredible. Mmm. 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 When I was seventeen, long ago, I had my hair bleached white. No one told me I look younger. Bleach white hair is a little different. I think it makes you look like Draco Malfoy. Edgier. Yeah. Like there's a connotation that goes with it, I feel like. Yeah, that you you put effort into how you look. Like Daenerys is definitely making it cooler. Yeah. Like, hers isn't even bleach white, but it's it's close. Now slap that turkey and say who's your dad. What? Oh. What? Prometheus, why are you saying hey? Why? Oh yeah. So Zarya, we are on the same page tonight. I love Project Gutenberg. Um you but like Project what? Gutenberg? What is that? Um it is a database with older novels that are available to the public. Um I also like um Library Genesis. Yeah! Because I break the law. <laughs> um, Library Genesis is where I download illegally all of my books. So, you can also give that a, uh, a try. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with being a Malfoy. <laughs> um, finally, someone on the Malfoy side. Yeah. I love Draco Malfoy. Like, I had a huge crush on him. Huge. It's shocking, quite frankly, that we have not done a Harry Potter episode yet. It's sort of coming. We were going to do a Harry Potter episode and then she did- Ow! Ow! 
<laughs> what happened? I'm fine. I'm a paladin. I'm fine. What I'm happened? Fine. That whipped boiling hot water on my leg. <laughs> oh, the chili? Uh, was it chili? Yeah, there's no water. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, it's on the floor. I'm sorry. Oh. Is that done? Yeah. Food. Cam. Mm 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 mm. Wow, there's a ton of that. Yeah, I told you. Oh my god. Also, this was one of the cheapest episodes, and it's wow, and it's a ton of food. Guys, look at that steam coming off. Look at that steam. Holy. We are going to do a Tomb Raider episode as well. Bravo, Lexi. Bravo. Thank you. So while Jess was in Spain, I actually worked on a lot of stuff. I actually don't know if you... <laughs> I did. I took a look, yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tomb Raider will be one... Um, should I say it's about... Spoon fork. Um, and we have a crossover-ish episode coming up. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, so Dan is a part of the Weird Al podcast, <laughs> which has a huge fandom. Weird Al is apparently super cool now these days. We should link it. Do you know the URL by heart? I don't. Okay. Um... But you you can go to Weird Al Pod ca- Podcast on Instagram and Twitter and just type in Weird Al Podcast into Apple Podcasts and it pops right up. Um, and there are four of them and they do a Weird Al Podcast and they have a huge fandom and since I live with him, we were talking about it and so we're going to do a crossover. And uh, Is this a Pipe Dream Podcast, Weird Alphabet? Uh, yeah, because you can see Dan's face right there. Oh, we're gonna unleash the Dan! <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay, yeah, working. so that's coming in May. So, yeah. I got some stuff done while she was gone. Not the cookbook, though. Still working on that. <laughs> it's so much harder than it's I thought it was It's a lot gonna of be. work, yeah. But I, I can imagine. It's mainly because... It's easy for me to talk to you and be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing currently. But to translate it into... Word, are you happy? Are you happy? It's so good. I did not get us cheese or avocado. I do. But oh, you can totally. Mhm. Uh, I'm good. I don't want any cheese. Come to me. Uh, semi healthy. Oh good. I ate three brownies today at work, so I have to combat that. This is good how it is. Yeah. I'm gonna put cheese on it on the leftovers. This is amazing. I'm super upset that I like went grocery shopping today. Cause I'm gonna eat this all day, all day, every day. Dang, this is good. Um. Pretty sure Amazon has no digital version listed as available for a given book. The odds that such an edition what? for which book? I think we missed which one. What's your Hogwarts house? You are. Oh. Huff. Oh, we're Huff. talking about digital copies. Okay. Um, um, I am technically Hufflepuff. Technically. You're Ravenclaw. I think I'm a Gryffindor. You're Ravenclaw. See, this is on Hufflepuff, because I'm ambitious like a Slytherin, I'm brave like a Gryffindor, motorcycle, traveling alone to Egypt, hello, and Ravenclaw, because I'm an erudite. So, they were like, the Sorting Hat was like, you know what? You know what, Bia? We're putting you in Hufflepuff. Because you too good for all the houses. (laughs) So they put you in Hufflepuff. I'm a Gryffindor. It's fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Lexi's a Gryffindor. I'm <clears throat> Actually, it was the way that we did it. So when I was a kid, and I was real angsty, I was a Slytherin when I was in high school. Like, mm. all throughout grade school and high school, I was always Slytherin. And then I got to college, and I was like, I'm a happy person! <laughs> and somehow that translated into instantly shifting me into Gryffindor. But yeah, yeah, I hadn't done a test in maybe like five, six years. And we were all sitting around on a game night, and uh, I was like, I'm not a Gryffindor, I'm a Slytherin, I've always been a Slytherin. And everyone was like, you're a Gryffindor. With this connotation that I was awful for being a Gryffindor. What? Yeah. Like, oh, Gryffindors. They think they're so cool. You're brave and adventurous. I am brave and adventurous. I drove in my car four days to live out here by myself. Yeah, total Gryffindor move. Yeah. Or Slytherin, because ambitious. I am amb- I'm yeah. ambitious. It, it sways from size. <laughs> For those of you who are joining us, yes, we're talking about Harry Potter right now. We had a lengthy debate an hour ago about Dungeons and Dragons alignments because 5th edition opened up alignments for paladins and 
Alexi and I did not agree on Robin Hood. Well, and, or, and and overall, just how you define what lawful means, really. Yeah. You know, and in the end, we decided it had to be a DM decision or a campaign 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 decision. Hmm. Mm, that is delicious. It's very good. Yeah, I'm all about this. Don't trust the Facebook quiz. You have to take the legit sorting hat quiz. Pottermore. Yeah, and you can take the one for the American school as well. I need to take that one yet. We should and do Hufflepuff in that one too. I don't think there is a I didn't think there was a Hufflepuff. The Hufflepuff, the Hufflepuff of, version of the American school. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hot. Most cats are either Slytherin, Ravenclaw, or Gryffindor. Cats can't be... Wait, what? What? As a lover of cat, you're anti-Gryffindor. Why? Wait, what? Wait, my Michael Super fan, you're leaving? Wait, Why are you, why are you anti... Bye! Why are you anti-Gryffindor if you like cats? Yeah, I don't get that. Every day I'm Slytherin. Hermione had Crookshanks. Yeah. <laughs> The legit sorting hat quiz can be found at Pottermore.com. Like, that is the one that J.K. Rowling did the questions for. Liver money! Yes, thank you for me, this. Yeah, liver money. Mmm. Where do you- yeah, yeah. Pottermore. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, the questions- the cool thing about it is you can take the quiz, like, three times, three or four times, you get different questions. So it's like- you oh, can't really? take the quiz again and- you know how you do that thing. I want to take it again. Maybe when we do our stream, I'll take it again. Because I really want to know. Well, I should take it beforehand so I know what to wear. I was really mad that I was a Gryffindor. Because, like, I didn't feel supported as a Gryffindor. I do now. I've got the hat. Elena and I had a really great Harry Potter Universal Studios day. And so. Oh, that's right. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I was a the Gryffindor. She was the Slytherin. And Why didn't you invite me? Because she had only one pass, and I, I had never been there before. Oh, she did the inviting. Yeah. Why didn't she invite me? You guys weren't living together then. Yeah, we were. And I was like, what the hell? No, you weren't. Yes, we were. Because <laughs> she was like, I'm going to Harry Potter with Lexi. And I was like, oh, sounds like fun. And so I was like, oh, I It was a great day. <laughs> um, we should go because I'm a pass holder. I own all of the passes <laughs> this year. That was on accident, though. An accident? Yeah, because um, other roommate works for a great company, and we wanted to do something for New Year's. And anything in Los Angeles for New Year's is a hundred dollars minimum. Oh, really? Like, you know, if you want to get dinner and drinks and like go out. My last two New Years, I just went to someone's. Or, I went to an apartment this year, and last year Elena and I read tarot cards here. Awesome. <laughs> so, no, those are we both didn't go amazing. Anywhere. But if you want to like get dressed up and have like New Year's with fireworks and drinks, it's it's a hundred. Like get in and do all of that. Yeah. Um, like uh, Clifford, wait, Clifton's, Clifford's uh -huh. or whatever downtown. Yeah. yeah. Always uh, super expensive. Okay. Um, and so Kelleher, my other roommate, really wanted to go out and have a Los Angeles New Year's, and I was like, okay, cool, I can get down on that. And his work had a ticket that was like $105 for the year. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So we got our pass for cheaper than a day ticket. That's awesome. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well do that. I would yeah. probably do that too. So now I can go to Harry Potter World whenever I want. Yeah. You should do some B-roll for us for a Harry Potter episode. Get I that. can't join you, but you should do some B-roll. Get that warm butterbeer. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh -huh. Have you had the warm butterbeer? I've had warm butter beer that's not from Harry Potter World. So they have frozen butter beer and then like regular butter beer all year long. And I don't know if it's because I was freezing. I was wearing this actually hmm. with like a pico. Um, but we went to Three Broomsticks. I'd never been there because when Elena and I went, it was super busy. He had never been there, so we had a traditional Christmas feast mm. and hot butter beer. So I don't know if it was because it was so cold, but it tasted a thousand times better. Hmm. So, hot butter beer is the way to go at the Harry Potter world. I feel like the spices more. Yeah. No. Release that cinnamon a little more. There's a Patronus quiz. <clears throat> what house is Pebbles? <gasps> I'll be right back. 
Uh, I think Pebbles would be a Hufflepuff too, don't you? Um, yeah, she likes to eat. Why is that a Hufflepuff thing? Because they live right next to the kitchens. That's a thing? Hufflepuff yeah. lives right next to the kitchen? Yep. Yeah, there's a whole joke about them being like, Hufflepuff! Come here, Pebbles! Oh man, that makes so much sense now. You are a Hufflepuff! You can take that quiz again, but use a Hufflepuff. Wait, I missed something. Here's a very important question. Was hospitals? Yeah. Oh, wow. Girl. I know. Pebbles is taking your house quiz right now. I know. Hold on. Okay. Come here. Come here. Be good girl. It's the painting that leads to the kitchen. Yeah. Man, I need to reread Harry Potter. It's so good. I'm actually re-watching them all right now because HBO has them all for free. HBO Go. Yeah. Tickle the pear. Is that a Harry Potter thing? Yeah. Oh, you're so good. My Patronus is a fox. Oh, I need to so figure good. out what my Patronus is. Hardcore. Oh, she took her quiz and now she's coming! She's a dragon claw! Oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> Does it not button up? It can. Come here. <laughs> She's so upset. Where is the other one? <laughs> oh, we have a special yes. guest dragon kitty for our paladin episode. It's <laughs> so cute on her though. Like you have to show them this angle that I see. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her. Here, watch on the counter just for now. Oh, she slipped out. Oh, we gotta put your, we gotta put your paw back. I know. Mm -hmm. There you go. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Does it? Oh no, Pebbles, you are too. She's you're, too big for this. Big okay. She's too big for the costume. I didn't get a big enough size. <laughs> you're being so good. Oh my god, it's so cute. You're being so good. Yeah? <laughs> are you being a good girl? Yeah. She's like, I just want to go. You're being a good girl. Pebbles will be back in this costume yeah. for our Harry Potter episode as a dragon. Oh. Oh my god, she's so oh. dragon cat! We'll have to get a, a good photo of her later. Oh yeah. That'll be her, uh... Hey, you being good? <laughs> You're being good! Oh girl! You're being good. Hey. Yeah, Pebbles oh. is the best kitty. You're so good. Are you the best kitty? You're so Are good. You this is actually like a really great... Pet costume though, like if only it was a little bigger. I don't know that any costume would fit pebbles though. What size is this? Probably large. <laughs> oh. oh, don't you like it? But I like that it's like a jacket where like good girl. If your apartment suddenly got really freezing, just put a dragon costume on. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't you like it? She loves don't it. Don't you like being a dragon? She just likes attention, so she's kind of like, she's like, I hate you, but I also like that you're touching me right now. What's wrong, Babs? Yeah. Yeah. You're getting attention. She's so derpy looking. <laughs> oh, Melrose is jealous. She's Yo. getting into the bags. You're so good. Wanna get down again? My rose is stuck in a bag. <laughs> no, you can't jump down like this. You're gonna hurt yourself. You're gonna hurt yourself. What? Can you put her hood on again? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> Look at your little hood. I just, like, I think this one can. <laughs> there we go. We'll have to do that when we get the photo. Yeah. Over. Oh, Pabs, it's okay. I have to slay you! <laughs> Will you get the sword? I put it over there on the coffee table. <laughs> Lexi's gonna slay you, hold on. Oh my god, Melrose. She's gotta she's gotta chop your head off. Melrose will never be on stream. She's the angriest. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pips. I love you. <laughs> slay the monster. Pew! Uh. <laughs> She's like, die cry. Not like this. Oh, Woo! Right. Okay, we'll let you down. We'll let you oh. down. Hold on. Come here. Come on. 
Let me undo it. No, oh, she likes it. Booger. That was a no. Booger, you're okay. Hold on. You're okay. Do you call her Booger? Yeah. Good girl. Oh, I wish I had treats to give her. Does she want some chili? <laughs> so that's Pebbles in a uh, dragon costume. Help, I'm being tortured. Please send help. She always meows like that, regardless to anyone. She is the sweetest cat in the house. Don't tell Elena I said that. Uh, but yeah, she's the best. Well, Elena the other day was introducing her as... Uh, <laughs> yay, cheered! Yay, cheers! What does it say? Hi, uh, oh, well, I missed oh, it. Oh, there it is. No, it's right there. Where? Oh. Hiya, Papa, everyone. Yes, I called everyone. <laughs> yes, I called everyone a papaya. Oh, papaya. Oh, my it. God. Thank you, Demios. Did you see Dragon Cat? Or did you miss Dragon Cat? Dragon Cat. Well, Dragon Cat's not going to make a reappearance. No, Dragon Cat is upset that happened, so. <laughs> is she really? She's going to take a break. Well, she's just, she's just, she's going to chill over there for a minute. Mm. But she's going to have to get back in costume later for cast photographs. We slayed the dragon. Good work. We did. Mm. Rue. Boom. Good work. I wasn't hungry when I got here. It's just so good. It's very good. I'm going to keep eating. Mm. Mm. I heard mm. dragon cat. Mm. Dra dragon cat. Mm. You know mm. Elena watches this, right? She'll probably know that you said that. <laughs> she knows that Melrose is a knight. The other day we had a party, and she was introducing Pebbles as, this is the nice one. She was? Yeah. She was like, Pebbles is the nice one. You can hug her. You can talk to her, pet her. Melrose is... And then Tonks were like, stay away. <laughs> stay away from that cat. Melrose is like bipolar. Yeah, she is. Because I will randomly walk up and pet her. Because I'm here once a week now at this point, and I've known Melrose since before you guys lived together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like, hi, kitty. And then there's always like one week where you can pet her, and the other three weeks where she's like, and you're just like, I don't know how to talk to you. Now I must slay you. We should have Melrose. Dress you in a dragon costume so I can slay you. We should have put Melrose in the dragon costume and then like warded her off. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. What size is the dragon costume? I think it's a large. And it's meant for dogs. So I got a large dog costume. <laughs> Let me check. I, I went by the measurements. Um Pebbles is on like a little diet. She looks so good. She her face is thinning out a little bit. <laughs> she fits in the costume, it's just her, it's just tight. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, cause obviously we could snap it around her neck. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think it is a large, but her little belly, like, you don't want to be that cat parent. It's like, yeah. Like we want her to be comfy and happy at all times. Let me see if I can find it. Large um, dog breeds are much bigger than Pebbles. I think it was a large cat costume that you sent me. Uh, let's see. Where do I find all my goods? Let's see. We cannot comprehend the might of Dragon Cat. <laughs> what did I buy? What did I buy? Where's the things that I bought? So out of ten, how oh. will you like my greeting? Ten. It was a great greeting. Pebbles isn't fat, she's running happy. Pebbles is... Yeah. Alright, let's see. More. Give me more! Did it expire? It was a while ago. It took like... Eight years to get here. Yeah, I ordered it from China, so it took a while. Did you get it off the of eBay? Dang! No, I got it from uh, <clears throat> from um, uh, AliExpress. Mm. Yeah, it's somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I got her. It's either a medium or large, but clearly both of those sizes were too small. Yeah. It took eight years. <laughs> she is round and happy. No, honestly, I think you sent me that. Like in our third episode, and you were like, Look what I got, Pebbles! Mm -hmm. And this, like, when you guys saw it for the first time, I saw it for the first time. So. Today? Yeah. Because you kept saying you were gonna, like, I think you got it before you left for Spain. I got it a while ago, yeah. And, and you kept being like, so. Well, you'll show me. But after we get done with these episodes, we do a lot of other stuff. Mm. So. Yeah. It's been in my costume bin for a while. Yeah. I have Does a she little get a reindeer hat? hat, too, for her? Oh that my god, super why did we not bring that out for the, cost the Candyland episode? I thought I lost it, but I didn't. It's in my costume box. The world is right again. 
I've never seen a round cat that I would consider generally unhappy, so. True Fair. that. I've never seen a round anything that's unhappy. What? Never seen, like, a round person. Like, nothing that surrounds unhappy. Just rolls. Round through. means happy. Just rolls through life, you know what I'm saying? Just like the Earth. And Mars. And Pluto. Which is the know. planet again. I don't know. Wait, it is? I think so. Can someone confirm that Pluto is a planet again? That my childhood has been reinstated? Uh, for science, my kid, not my kid, but the kid I'm Annie used Pluto as a planet. Hmm. And because I was he not- know either way if it wasn't, you know? And, uh, I didn't have a sheet in front of me, so I just told him he was right. <laughs> so, it's not my fault. Wasn't it classified as, like, a, a moon or something? As of a different planet, or like a dwarf planet? It's a dwarf planet. planet? Mm. I thought they said it was a planet again. Whatever, he got a bad grade on his test. I'm doing great at my job. So, I'm like trying to think of other things that we can talk about with paladins, but. Um, yeah. Paladins? Why do you say that they're the mom? Because. Just their nature, like, most of them, and like the historical element of them being lawfully good. And I guess coming from Shield Maidens, our paladin was definitely the mom of the group. Like, she always hung back to make sure everyone was okay, and like had to check in with everybody's feelings, which can be a... The feelings thing was definitely like, I think a character choice? Yes, it was. And not strictly paladin? I could see how it worked for a paladin. Like, it, it, it kind of flowed with what a paladin was. Mm -hmm. I don't think if, like, Dahlia would've walked in and been like, are you okay? Like, it wouldn't have made sense to me. If um, Dahlia did? Yeah. I think it would have. Yeah. I think Dahlia was emotional. Any, but she was emotional, but not as in, like, an everyone encompassing sort of emotion. As, okay. As where, because going through the different oaths, like even Oath of Vengeance, like you're fighting for the greater good, and you kill evil, and like you get these fun angelic wings at the end, and like even Oath of Vengeance. You do? Yeah. I think that's Oath of Vengeance. I'm almost positive. Um, either that or just completely forked up my entire paladin <laughs> character. Let's take a look, sir, shall um, we? But every single oath that I looked at, there's always this hint of goodness in it, and so and um. I don't know, when I was doing uh, a druid or a warlock, you are more, you're more inward and singular, where you kind of are like, this is the thing that I pledge everything to, as where all of these oaths seem to be covering a greater group and being like, I want this to be okay. I see. Yes. And I so see. I was like, mm -hmm. what a mom thing to do, to be like, is everybody happy? Is everybody okay? As where everybody else is like, I've got my own thing going on over here, yeah. thank you. But sometimes you need that character. Yo, you absolutely do, which is why I think paladins are great and necessary to a group. I don't ever really want to fully play one. Um, but yeah, I think, I think they're great. I 100% <gasps> believe that they are, yeah, right? Angelings. Okay. Avenging Angel. What? Yeah. I swear, I read this book over when I got it all the way through, and I do not remember this. That is nuts. That they get angel wings? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. At twenty, but it's twentieth level, so it's like I've, I've never played past, twelve level nine. eight. Uh, in a campaign, in like a full campaign, I've never gotten past level eight, which is where I'm currently at now. <clears throat> I believe or, I can fly. I'm at seventh. I, we were eighth. I was eighth level in. Druids become immortal and have a timeless body. Like if I'm gonna choose anything, I'm gonna <laughs> choose to stick around forever. But well, I don't like to choose. Not to say that that's what you did, but I don't like to choose um, classes based on like the high high level. No, that's stuff. a dumb move. Because yeah, like you never get there. Like or you could, but it's gonna take forever. So you might as well. That, I mean, that was my argument with multi-classing when we had that conversation, because it's like, you might as well just have fun while you can, you know? Honestly, if I were <laughs> going to choose anything based on, like, lower level spells for a paladin, I would have chose Oath of Ancients, mm. but because of my severe love of the druids, I tried <laughs> to pick something else and create a character behind that, so yeah, that affected my choice, but I think Oath of Ancients is pretty fun. 
Wouldn't surprise me. Avenging angels are a thing. Oh, we have Pluto is not a planet, it's still a dwarf planet. Yep. Okay. Eris is larger than Pluto? Oh. That okay. J Par Superfan is on. Fair enough. Thank you, J Pars. Our paladin was the problem of our group. So many avoidable combats due to moral inflexibility. Yeah. That's... You know, that's actually curious though, because usually I feel like it's the chaotic characters who incite fighting. In my well, that's not saying inciting fighting, that's saying like issues in a fight. Because of moral like I I'm assuming that means like no, you're so many avoidable combats due to moral inflexibility. So like they were encountered with a problem and due to moral inflexibility there was a combat. That's what I'm assuming that, that means. Oh, I in my head I was like, no, a paladin wouldn't fight wouldn't want to like cause harm. Huh. I don't know. But you know you're that could still cause combat though. Right. Um, no, I've never reached the level where spellcasters get OP. I'm so excited for it. One but day. it hasn't happened. Someday. Someday, maybe. Yeah. Does D&D have Shadow Knights? Um, they have, um, paladins who are the oath of, um... Something. Conquest. That's probably the closest you can get, but they, they have Shadow Monks, and they have Shadow Sorcerers. But they don't have shadow knights. I'm sure you could combine. They have eldritch knights, don't they? Isn't don't, isn't there an eldritch knight in eldritch fighter? Blast. There's yeah, there's something in fighters. Am I crazy? Uh, I don't know if it's fighter, but E F G fighter fighter eldritch knight. Yes. So. Maybe Eldritch Knight is closest, but there's no strictly Shadow Knight in 5e. That I know of, at least. But no, Eldr I, don't, I don't think that's okay. Eldritch Knights used to be more than just a subclass of fighter. They used to be a whole thing, right? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we got the- we got the- Oat bars. I don't think they're going to set in the time that we needed to set. Yeah, I can see when I'm... Here, let's see a little bit. Oh, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Still living in there. Mm-hmm. Slice it. Slice it like a paladin with your tiny sword. I'm like, I don't know how to get it out. Shadow, something that wears plate but is evil and likes to hang out with dead people. <laughs> Shadow knights are a thing, but I think, are they a creature? Yes. Like they're a dark creature. They're a monster. Yes. Shadow knights are a monster. They're an undead, I think. Yeah, let me Google. Uh, I'm pretty it's, sure we fought one. It's in the back of the book. Shadow, Shadow Knight D&D. Mm. No, this isn't what we fought. What is it? Um, oh, and Shield Death Knight. Death Knight? Dark Knight. We fought Batman. That's what really happened. Uh, I'm taking a drink of Lex accidentally cuts Jess. It's not gonna happen. I'm gonna find this. I'm, I'm really curious, actually. Okay. My d, &D book. So... We put this in the freezer so that this would happen quickly while the stream was happening. If you make these at home, don't do this. <laughs> put them in the refrigerator and let them set for like four to six hours. So. Where's the index? Index! Okay. Yes, Death Knight. That's what we're thinking of. It is the same thing as a Shadow Knight? We fought a Death Knight. <laughs> yeah, it's we're, what we thought was a Shadow Knight is a Death Knight. Uh, let me see if there's Shadow Knight. No, no. Well, we were we were thinking of a of a of a Death Knight. Um, we do have a knife at the serrated edge. Do you want to try that? 
Yeah. Um, like it's not the fact. It's the fact that like I'm cutting against the edge. I'm gonna try this. Like yeah. side. I think it's the fact that like to get anything, like mm. I'm hitting the edges. It's okay. I'm gonna keep using this guy because I'm almost there. Do you want a shorter knife? Nah. We're good. <laughs> we all good. Um, any 5e evil paladin, I figure, is basically an anti-paladin. Yeah, I don't think paladins can be evil. Um, it's just a warlock. <laughs> like, if you're pledging an oath to something. Yeah. Like, it's just a warlock. Uh, yeah, you're basically a blade lock, yeah. Uh, or a, uh, what do you, a hex blade. Yeah. Actually. Oh. My, it's my party. Came out. Oh, yay! <clears throat> My party members don't know this, but, um... They're very messy. My new, my barbarian mm -hmm. is turning into a hexblade. Yes! I'm so excited. But they don't know anything, so hopefully they're not watching. I don't think they are. If they are, you heard nothing! It's a secret. She wandered up into the woods. And the oh, because you're multi-classing? Mm -hmm. Barbarian warlock. Barbarian hexblade? Mm -hmm. Mm. It's gonna be sick. Forkin' awesome. Uh, it's gonna be sick. If I play it well, I have to play it well. You will. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a little difficult. It's definitely a challenge, but... Jess uh, is one of my favorite people to play D&D with. Thanks! We have to do it more often. Yeah, we've done it the one time. Two different characters, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, you. <laughs> Look what I did! Yay. Um, I played a fighter once. I think I'm playing a fighter soon. Um, mm. I like playing a fighter a lot. I think it's my second or third favorite because really? I, I really liked warlocks. Mm. I didn't think I would, but I really liked them. Mm. So I'm torn between like warlock and fighter. Really? You want druid? No, druid is one. Mm. Second or third place, her. I like um. Sorcerers and wizards. I can't decide which one I like more. I think I like sorcerers better. That innate magic is just a little... It's a so little cool. saucier than learning magic. We're gonna have a sorcerer episode coming <clears> up. <throat> and so I've been doing research on sorcerers to figure out their food. Mm. He's the only sorcerer I've ever been around. Was Lowen. Um, My hag is a sorcerer. And so I was like, oh, a bunch of water spills. <laughs> no. Like, that was super creative. Now knowing, like, what a sorcerer does. Mm. Good on you. Mm. Um, Sorcerers work really well with the elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll be playing with... Genasis are great sorcerers. We'll be playing with some fire. Uh, Yay! So. so I think it interrupted you when you were describing the Tomb Raider recipes. By the way, guys... This is amazing. This is so good. Check out how the density of this thing. It's super good. Like, yum. Look at all those layers. Autofocus, come on! Ha! <laughs> it looks. It's. Oh, oops. Oh, got some of the chili. That's okay. It's got very a little good. dinner and dessert. <laughs> um, the cool thing about these two. I was just reading an article. If you don't cook the oats, they actually have more nutrients in them. <clears throat> so, really? Yeah. Because it's just like when you cook vegetables, you cook some of the nutrients out. So. Hmm. Sans is... chocolate and butter. This isn't bad. Mm, excellent. This is really, really good. Well, we've got enough to feed an army. Mm-hmm. 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 Synthetic likes monks, and mm. this is a barbarian. <laughs> mm. I think the density became clear based on Lexi's difficulty cutting through it. <laughs> the density isn't the issue; it is the fact that they're frozen, <laughs> or they were frozen when I pulled them out. It's hot in here, so they immediately became unfrozen. Mm. <clears throat> um, you know, I'm playing a barbarian. I've been playing a barbarian. Actually, the longest I've ever played a character, I think, is a barbarian. My barbarian. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we just start the beer soon. Mm. Um, they're not my favorite class by far. 
which is why I'm multi-classing, because they are, even with the new Xanakars, they're pretty limited. So. They're just banging and smash stuff. But they're easy for, and I don't mean this in a patronizing way, but they're easier for, I think, people who just don't want to think as much when it comes to, like, spells, or, like, even <coughs> fighters have to think a lot, because there's all the different things fighters you are can awesome. do. They're like monks, in a way. I like fighters. You spend points, right? No. But you only have so many things you can do. You have so you only have so many things you can do, but you don't have points. Mm. Um, I actually liked a fighter better than a rogue. Hmm. I really wanted to like a rogue, and Elena is probably the best way to play a rogue. <clears throat> like just to be excited about it, because oh. you can't really do, like you really do have to kind of hide. Mm -hmm. I mean, rogues are war like warlocks in that. They are a touch more versatile. Versatility as opposed yeah. to bang, you know? Whereas sorcerers can blast. Wizards can blast in their own way. Druids kick butt when they Druids get... are just the best. Yep. The best class. Druids are the best. Um <clears throat> Yeah. Rogues have to be in and out. They can they gotta use that toolkit. That th so thieves tools. Yeah. I feel like rogues are great for story. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not playing a long campaign, I don't think a rogue is very fun. But I think if you're playing a long campaign where you have characters, you gotta build into the story of rogue a little more. They're mm. great. <clears throat> I think a rogue needs a buddy. Yeah. Rogues needs buddies. Or otherwise they're too loner. Well, we'll get to that when we get to our yeah. rogue episode. We'll explore that. We're gonna do it all in the dark. <laughs> Can you see us? Only by the candlelight, sneaking around. Which is brighter than the actual light. <laughs> They're very bright candles, yeah. But yeah, we're gonna do Tomb Raiders next week, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I actually, I think I told you guys this. I saw it. Did I tell them that? No, you told me that. I don't know if I told you guys in the Jessica Jones episode, but I saw Tomb Raider already. I saw an early screening of it two weeks ago. Oh, we're um, filming. Huh? While we were, we were filming, and then you ran off. Oh, yeah, I saw it right after. Oh, I saw it right mm -hmm. after we filmed the Jessica mm -hmm. Jones episode. So I haven't told you guys yet. Um, and I will tell you my opinion next week. Next week. Mm. If anybody has somebody for me to dress up as, because there's no blondes. I'm not dressing as your dad. That's right. I don't, do, do. I don't do men like you do. You do it so well. Mmm. God of mustard! <laughs> um. <laughs> who could you be? So, yeah. <laughs> Chat room. Send out the memo. Hmm. Hmm. Bards are by far and away the best. Yeah, the bard episode's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait. The D and D musical. Oh, I had just heard from, of um of Pillars actually from a friend, um who told me to check it out. Pillars. Um, Pillars of Exile. Hmm. Uh, Warhammer. When it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat with combat with no prep, nothing beats a well-built monk in early mid levels. I don't know. I think a barbarian. I think a barbarian could beat out a monk. But I mean, I don't know. Druids don't really have to prep a lot. Like, and he's saying monk though. Oh, so we're just going to fight him? He or she? Testing? Yeah. Sure. A well-built monk, because uh, with no preparation, <clears throat> like mental preparation of the player, or preparation like, in, in the campaign, like preparing your spells and stuff. Like, yeah, if you're not allowed to prep spells, then I guess... Then I would say it's still barbarian, because barbarians don't prep anything, they just punch things. Or a fighter. Fighters don't technically have to prep but anything. fighters, I feel like they still take logic, like you still have to think. You have to, you have to play them well. You have to play them well, but, yeah. like, you don't have to prep technically in the game. Right, 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 right. Because, right. like, you could play a barbarian <laughs> poorly and a monk really well, and then that logic works, or, like, vice versa. Yeah, I mean, that could be, yeah. I mean, I can play my barbarian poorly as well, because I can forget I have an extra attack, I can forget I get they an extra much crap. crit. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do? Barbarians, they have too much crap. Like, no. they have too much stuff to remember. They're easy, compared to other classes, I feel. Mm. Lex can dress as Daniel Craig from Angelina. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I look like Daniel Craig. 
I've some... actually never seen that version. I'm playing the Temple of something right now. <clears throat> Can we all agree that Rangers are the worst? I don't think they're the worst, but I think I feel like there there's three tiers of like powerful and awesome, versatile. Don't really know what to do with you. Yeah, like, they, they, you're they, not they, bad. But I don't know what to do with you. They're in that last category for yeah. sure. They can be cool. I think if you play them. That's probably, I mean, uh, although, I think warlocks fall in that last character, uh, that last category too. Yeah, no, I agree. Even though we love warlocks, they're kind of like in the, I don't really know what to do with you. You have two spell slots. Sorry. You can disguise self at will. Cool. Look what you, look what you can do. Yeah. Um, like, isn't you wizards, have you have a book? Like, and if you lose the book, what is the one, there's one where if you lose your book, you're screwed. Um, it's also, there's a warlock. Yeah, um, I knew there as well. Packed with the tome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, warlocks if you lose your book, but I mean, but wizards it's don't not have a book? likely that you would lose your book unless something really bad happened. But like wizards don't have a book. They do. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Unless you have a great DM. As a DM, I would totally take my wizard's book. It's such a good storyline. I'm sorry. But then they can't do anything. Then, as a group, you have to figure it out. It makes your group work as a team. I, I would do that, but like they would be able to complete it in a day, because I would suck for that person playing that they can't cast anything. Because that's they are so I squishy. Would, that's all I can do. I would probably be the DM that gave them like like how I got a staff, where I could have more animal power. Give them like a locket where they could store two spells, and then their book gets stolen. Where like they can still do something, but oh, it's mean. It's mean. I'm sorry. At the same time, it's like saying as a DM, you have to like. The party has to work as a team, and I think sometimes if you have a really like an unruly party, you have to force them to work together. Okay, as like a punishment sort of thing. <clears throat> Not a punishment, just as like a lesson. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes as a DM, you are God and also the like parent of the group, and you need to kind of direct them where they need to go. Yeah, I feel like taking away a wizard's book is like taking away all of a knight's armor and weapons. But again, that's why I said I would be anything. like, here's your locket. You'd be like, you can have one javelin. Yeah. I, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I think you need to mix up the story. I like, I also, my big thing <laughs> with D&D is I get really bored with fights. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big character play person. And so to me, that would be interesting to be like, all right, guys, what do you do? Or like, when we would do fights and... I'm a pretty selfish D&D player, so as a druid, I would just burn my spell slots and be like, guys, I have one healing left! Oh, yeah. I, th I, I <coughs> thoroughly believe in that. Use all your stuff. Use yeah. it. Because a lot of people save their stuff. I played, they don't use it. I played so many months of being like, I have to heal. I'm the only healer. And then I said something out loud one time, and Lauren was like, oh, I've had healing spells all along! And I was like... Because <laughs> druids have really great spells that knock out chunks of people. And I was like, yeah. I mean, if you have a, a paladin, cleric, bard, we didn't druid. Have any we just had a druid, and I had we never. Had paladin, paladin's heal, lay on hands. But I didn't know that. Like, I didn't do research into what a paladin was until today. And Adele had a healing word. Adele was well. with us, though. I think by the tell time Adele got there, I was already like, I don't care! We, we had a conversation as well where I was like, should I pick this up so that you can do yeah. less healing? And you were like, that would be and, nice. Yeah, please, someone heal. That would be nice. Because it so, did. I, I remember that Facebook conversation we had. Yeah, where you were like, I'm debating between these two things, and I was like, please heal. <laughs> yeah. Well, mainly because our group also had... You know, when you play in a group, you have people who, like, run into the fray, like, willy-nilly, and you're just like, I don't want to heal you, I want to do my own thing, but yeah. okay, you're gonna die real soon. And, I mean, um, Kelly is my DM, she, uh, plays, like, Matt Mercer, wh where if you get hit when you are unconscious, it's an automatic two, uh, fail, uh, death saving throws. Awesome. Two. A three. Yeah, I would do that too. You gonna be dead. I'm sorry, I think in D&D you have to have consequences. For sure. 
Because yeah. I think, especially with our party, we got to a point where we were like, oh, somebody will throw a berry in my mouth, somebody will come up Pretty and heal me. Pretty invincible, yeah. And, like, I had... Why can't I think about it? Spoken... Not spoken word. What is it? Healing, healing word. word. There yeah. we go. I had healing word on me all the time. Mm-hmm. And I had to use it all the time. Yeah. Well, like, you live and you learn different yeah. campaigns, too. That's why it's nice to play different campaigns. Yeah. With different people, because you learn different things. Yeah. I feel like people miss the point that parties should work together. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's like the first lesson you really need to learn is that you work together. And, and conflict is cool, but only when it is purposeful and you know what you're doing is like humans playing together. You still have each other's back, even in conflict. Yeah. It's like, I would love to see a D&D party where they're in like a full-on brawl with each other, but then Chitaki hits the fan and they immediately just have each other's back. Like, that's a yeah. cool moment for you to have as players to be like, nope, okay, cool, boom. We're kind of at that point right now in the campaign I'm playing. We all just had this big, like, fight between several characters where we were like, where, what are we doing? Why are we on this adventure? Why we, We're not even friends. Why do we even like each other? Why are we here together? Mm. We haven't hit a bi- Actually, no. Then our last session was we hit three... Three elementals, fire, air, and water, swirled together because Kelly, Kelly D'Angelo, I would love is a to, monster. I would love to play in one of Kelly's games. She sounds fantastic. Like, yeah. I, I'm also the person who wants to get thrown <laughs> into the fray and have to learn how to figure it out. I like yeah. being put in situations. Kelly teaches you real quick that you are <clears throat> but a player and you better play well. I like that though, like even in life, like I work better under pressure, I work better when things, like when Shitaki hits the fan, I'm a much better person. Like when nothing's going on, I'm like, eh. but when like the stakes are higher, I just do better. Yeah, it's all about character development. Mm-hmm. That's why Dungeons and Dragons is so cool! Sometimes you're lawful, sometimes you're not. <laughs> okay, um, I also feel sometimes people sometimes forget that running away is okay. Oh yeah, we had to, we had, we've had definitely had to run away. Did we ever run away? We might, I think we might have once. You won. But I can't. I, I, I can only recall details <clears throat> from my current campaign. And we ha- we legit. I got hit with like 36 points on the first hit of the round. And I was like, cool. That's all the hit points of someone else in my party. So good thing I'm a barbarian. I gotta, go. I gotta go. We should go right now. No, I remember specific points of being like, there are four people that are going to die. I'm in animal form right now. I can't help any of you, and being like, mm-hmm. just gonna jump on this thing and hope for the best. And yeah. it worked, like, two or three yeah. times. But I was like, that's a ballsy move, and I didn't even know if I could do that. But I was like, I got nothing left! But yeah, we never ran away. I don't think we ever ran away. I mean, I can't remember us running away. No. I'm just thinking, like, oh, we must have. I remember, like, m- episodes where, like, s- like, half the party was down. And at one point, like... Lauren was down, and I was like, I either fight this thing or heal my friends. I'm gonna go yeah. hide behind this rock and try to heal you people. Classic Dungeons and Dragons Ooh. dilemma. Ooh. Sounds, what'd you say? Sounds like the person who had visit for the DM episode. Dude, Kelly and or Satine, for sure, for the DM episode. That all would be them. amazing. Like, all mm. the powerful females in the house. Mm. I would love that. Actually, we could probably have I mean, they don't, they play, they have played the classes before. I wonder if I could get them on for, like, a class. I don't know which ones they like best. I know Kelly's playing a bard with me. So she could do Aww. bard. Satine played a druid-type druid. character. Didn't she play a druid named Dahlia? Yes, she did. She did. We all looked at each other like, Ooh! She wasn't truly a druid, she was just, like, a druid-type yeah. creature. Yeah. Are we gonna stream a D and D campaign someday? Yes. Um, Half Donna, I know, I know she has a show. She took over from Matt Mercer. Hello. I actually have. I'm reading through the book right now and have a campaign. That I'm working on. You know about it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, It'll be a little bit for that. I will be streaming one of two shows or both at some point. <laughs> When they go up. They're both still in development right now, so. Yeah. Everything's always in development. 
Monster Campaign and D and D and D coming at you sometime. Uh, okay, so I think I think we're about ready to Eat wrap up. up, right? Yeah, we got we got food for days. We'll see we you next week when so we finally finish this. Is this cool yet? Should be, yeah. I want to show them. You want me to just mm. how much food this is? Oh, where'd you go? You gotta move it over this way. What? Over there. That screen. Oh. <laughs> Look how much food this is, guys! So much food for the road. This could feed a whole party. I kind of want to like box it up and give it to them. <laughs> just be like, no, I want it. Love damsels and dishes. I want it. I want it in my belly. This is delicious. It's... I'm not even hungry, and I can't. All of it is so good. Um, but yes, we will see you guys next, next week. week. Uh, Give Lexi suggestions on what she should dress up as next week. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, we could both be Laura Croft. Is there a blonde Laura Croft? No, but like we could be the Battle of the Laura Croft. Sexy Angelina Jolie Laura Croft and normal looking Alicia Vikander Laura Croft. Could be an option. I'll dye my hair black for next week. <laughs> that would be cool. Um,. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us, um, and thank you for joining us last week as well for the pre-tape Jessica Jones episode, and yeah, we'll see you next week for Tomb Raider stuff. Whoop, it's gonna whoop. be awesome. Um, yeah. I wanna, like, do a little... Should we have cut that with that? Like a little salute. I don't know. <clears throat> I salute you all. Oh, you, gotta, you wanna knight them, I see. I'm knighting you. You gotta do on each side. Ah. And there you go. go. Yep. Nah, yep. And then on top. Boom. All, all right. right. Good night to you all. Night.